Hello and welcome to a special episode of The Cooligans. Uh, it is uh, a, a sad, another sad episode. Um, yeah. uh, we, we didn't expect to have such a, a sad one today, um, <laughs> but it is, uh, that's our reality right now. And obviously, if uh, you are on social media or on if you follow us, if you've seen any of the news, if you listen to uh, plenty of, uh, you know, MLS broadcasts, uh, Richmond Kickers broadcasts, you have heard the news about Daryl Grove and his passing. Uh, last week we had mentioned that uh, he was going into hospice care and uh, the news that we didn't want arrived. Yeah. And uh, look, when someone goes into hospice, you've kind of start preparing yourself and you know, I heard something uh, this weekend. Uh, my wife works uh, at a cancer hospital, and she said the toughest part of uh, seeing the families is that the person passes away twice. Uh, you know, when you transfer them to hospice, you start to be prepare yourself uh, for that person's passing. And even if it's just a tiny glimmer of hope, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the wish for a miracle, and then it doesn't happen, there's sometimes a bit of a sense of relief that that person is no longer in pain. The passing is is the sense and the realization that we don't have complete power. We don't have the ability to change the future. We don't have the ability to make anything happen. Uh, you can only hope for the best. And uh, passing of someone that lives in Richmond, Virginia, that we've known for, what, max, four years? Yeah. Right? To For someone to have this level of, of effect on us as, has set me uh, back. Uh, it's it's put me sort of on my ass. It's just made me realize how if you're just a good person, how you can have such a positive effect for so many people. I mean, Wolves, the the club that he followed since he was a child, uh, tweeted. Yeah. Uh, so many people are are banding together. We're planning on doing something with a bunch of other pod, uh, podcasts and broadcasters uh, in his honor. But you know. And the funniest part of all this, and funny in, in the sense that it's just a word I use here, it's not actually funny, is that so many people are saying like how wonderful he was and and, and how, how positive Daryl Grove was and how uplifting he was. And dude, when people die, we say shit like this all the time. Like, oh, they were always a light. In the we almost never mean it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes <laughs> that guy's an asshole. Sometimes yeah, that yeah. lady owes you money. Daryl really was that guy that just brought constant positivity. Even like he took a sick joy out of watching you and I be kind of rude sometimes because he's like, <laughs> I would never do this. Remember, yeah, like it. he kind of sat back and giggled when we would roast someone. Look at these <laughs> Americans being so mean to each other. And he would be like, oh, my God, they're not being nice. And it, the part that shocks me the most is that I have friends I, that I've known since I was, a fi you know, five, four or five years old before I knew English. That if they passed, I mean, it would be bad, but it, I don't think it would affect me this much because Daryl was just one of those people that I can look at and tweet at or text at and just be like, you know, ask for advice or, or just be positive or just be in a, in a, uplifting in a way that I don't think many other people are. I, I love, um, I mean, seeing that everybody's uh, has been either posting messages and, and uh, just their thoughts and can sending condolences and stuff like that. People have been have reached out to us just to make sure like if we're doing okay and things like that. And what I love is the way he, he treated us wasn't some anomaly, you know, it's literally every single person has just like, he made me feel uh, significant, important. He he was. It is an anomaly in my to how people treat us. <laughs> so, sure, yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. no, but that's it's a how he treated pattern people. of behavior for him. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <and very, laughs> um, look, obviously, our thoughts are, uh, you know, with the the Grove family. Uh, uh, Shannon, uh, goes out you know, Daryl's wife, uh, uh, Taylor, his wife. I mean, there's just so many people that he was obviously close to every single day. Um, it breaks our heart and it hurts. Us and I, I can only imagine how they may feel. In fact, I even looking at something like Gully Squad, which is a, a group of people who obviously know Total Soccer Show because they're big soccer fans. Many of them either only got a chance to meet uh, Daryl through the Total uh, the World Cup Comedy Tour, or have never met him at all. And the folks that have never met him are saying all the same things we're saying, and we yeah. knew him, which just lets you know that you know his 
his ability to to be positive and to add light where there's darkness spanned across all media. You got it through his podcast at five episodes a week. You're going to know someone's personality and you got, you got a chance to really know. And I want all of you to know if you didn't know him, but you listen to him and, and you kind of get the same idea of what we're saying when we're, you know, sharing stories, trust me, you got a chance to know who he was. And, and I hope, you know, moving forward, I think this is probably going to be more difficult for me than it is for Christian, but I hope that we can all be a little bit like Daryl. You know what I mean? It's probably going to take me a little bit harder, a lot longer <laughs> to try to be positive where he would always be positive. But I, I'm trying to think of all those moments and all those, uh, especially the private moments that I shared with him and try to try to I'm going to try to glean some of that and, and put that into my personality moving forward because uh, he had too much of a positive impact on me personally and our show and yeah. our friendship to to not do that not honor him that way and i and i think i, I had written this on twitter but like a person like daryl uh really never goes away you know what i mean like he affected no. too many people that his his uh personality traits are like instilled in all of us uh, and we will always sort of carry that on, uh, whether it's the way we approach our work, uh, uh, the way we interact with each other, with our loved ones. Like there's something anytime you left, uh, uh, you know, a, an interaction with him, you're like, oh, there is something you wanted to take away uh, from that to bring into your own life. Because they, you know, w when it comes, yeah, it, it becomes almost cliche. We keep saying it like he was so positive and all this stuff. But like, And it wasn't to say that he wasn't he didn't have any bad moments where he was angry or sad or anything like that. But it, it's like. He he could power through and find a silver lining anywhere, uh, and that is the, the the part that inspired me and 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 the trait that I want to kind of like bring uh, and continue to bring to the world. So, look to today, we're gonna bring uh, back the old episode of when we had Total Soccer Show on the show earlier this year, Daryl, which they and, were so excited about. I mean, they were even yeah, we're they, excited because when we first communicated with them. And, you know, whether it was before the talks of, of going on tour, when it was just we were in Philly for the coaches convention, United Soccer Coaches Convention, and, and they just immediately we clicked and became friends. They didn't have to help us. They didn't have to they didn't have to share best practices. Dude, they've walked through that mud already. You know what I mean? They didn't need to tell us, don't go that way, go this way. Here's who these people are. Talk yeah. to these people. They didn't have to do any of that. And I want everyone to know we're all throwing a lot of positivity on, on Daryl. Taylor is 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 cut from a similar cloth. Taylor didn't have to help us either. And the two of them certainly didn't say here's what you do or don't do but if we had any questions or if we were going down a, a path that was going to lead to not much they pulled us aside and said we've done that before do this they didn't have to do any of that and they absolutely did and daryl was the first uh to to offer advice where necessary especially if you had a question and to be able to give them the opportunity to give them a first someone who's been you know two people who've been in the business for so long that had yet to have been on TV and we're like, oh my God, we actually get to make that happen for them. And yeah. partially it's due to their credit that they helped us along the way and held our hands when they didn't need to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is, this is for me something that I feel really happy about that. I was like, you know, after this episode, they were kind of like, dude, we were just on TV. Like that moment was sort of real. And I'm like, I know, right. Cause we, that I remember that moment for us. And, and this is something that I know, and I think this needs to be said. The production staff here uh, sends their condolences to the to the Grove family uh, and to uh, Taylor and his family. Uh, the production staff here immediately clicked with these guys and fell in love with these guys just the same way we did. Um, and and some of the sentiments that we're sharing have, has also been shared um, on our production calls and stuff. And it's just the fact that they got to meet our family, you know, and this is our family here. Uh, it means the world to us, and that that our family got to meet them. Totally. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Fubo family sends uh, an incredible amount of love. Uh, it, it's we, we're all getting through this together and it, it's been uh, challenging. It, it's it's helpful to have the, the the support system that that we do, because to be honest, it, we wouldn't be able to do it. It, it would be so, so challenging w without the support that we do have. So um, so let's let's look back at um, at Total Soccer Show's time on on TV, on Fubo TV, we got uh, we got to do something really, really cool, and and, and it really felt like this coming together of like uh, uh, of, of friends, of like uh, of us being able to repay Total Soccer Show for what they've done for us. So, uh, everyone, thank you for listening to us, and let's look back at uh, at the time when Total Soccer Show was on the Cooligans. 
Stay tuned. That's next. What? Fin- finally that's all i have to say finally finally it's happened the collab of collabs <laughs> okay long overdue yes like about four or five months right too long <laughs> yeah absolutely because we got a lot of tweets <laughs> okay a lot of this requ- is gonna happen <laughs> yeah. hello welcome to the show everyone uh, uh my name is christian polanco that's right and i'm alexis guerreros all right uh, we are the cool against we are your favorite stand-up comedians that host the funniest soccer show that yeah, you have we, ever seen we better be okay all right <laughs> well, what other comedians are you watching right now that host a soccer show Show. Why? Does Kevin Hart host a soccer show? <laughs> yeah, I don't think yeah. so. You see anyone like Dimitri Martin, you know, with an easel trying to do soccer? Bits? Yo, I don't even think I don't even think Dimitri Martin knows what Tam is. Nah, bro. son, <laughs> get up out of here. You ain't no capologist, my dude. <laughs> We're also the gulliest soccer show. Correct. <laughs> we found a way to come back by just. <laughs> Uh, and we're excited about uh, today's show That's because right. not only uh, uh, do we have, uh, I mean, soccer experts, soccer geniuses. That's uh, right. Which is us. But we also <laughs> have these two other people. Our, our friends. Yeah. Our dear friends. Uh, absolutely true. We've been on the road together. We've done multiple uh, collab shows together. I think uh, say drugs. Episodes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. That's right. We're all snoring Adderall before the show. It's not true. Uh, we, we just these are. <laughs> he has to clarify. Because... Just because I know someone's watching, like, oh, cool. The cool again said I could snore Adderall. No, I didn't. You're a stepdad. Stop doing it. <laughs> Leave for your kids. Uh, <laughs> these are two of. Our favorite people, the two favorite people in this business that we've met. We absolutely love doing collabs with them. Finally, we got them on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together and do it twice as hard because it's two of them for Total Soccer Show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there it is. In unison. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. Uh, yes, Taylor Rockwell and Daryl Grove. Uh, you guys That's are them. here in New York. Daryl's at- the British one. <laughs> in case you're wondering, I think we're we're gonna know once he says yeah, one word. Yeah, yeah. The branding is British and big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taylor's the one who looks like he's here to pick up his kid from soccer, uh, <laughs> and also sounds like the kid he's picking up from soccer. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm just not gonna talk. People, yeah. people who are uh, possibly listening to this uh, already, we've done uh, countless crossover episodes. We've uh, we again so we've done many. tours together. We are uh, we are quite intimate with each other. All right, yeah. it's quite a foursome. That's, that was part of the tour show. <laughs> you really yeah. missed. That was the Amsterdam <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> but for the people uh, possibly watching who do not know who you guys are, you guys are the hosts of Total Soccer Show, which you've been hosting for quite a while 10 uh-huh. years 10 years 10 years and uh it is uh, prob- probably probably the, the most all-encompassing American soccer show I have ever heard. It is. Uh, I'll say this: it's the most iconic American soccer show. Okay, well, I wouldn't go that far. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, keep going. I want to hear more I'll, about I'll what it keep is. Keep going after the Cooligans. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Uh, how did Total Soccer Show begin? For some people who may not know who you guys are, and, and, and yeah, how did you end up here? What's the origin story? All right, so we'll do it real fast, right? Yeah. So we're based in Richmond, Virginia. Um, there was a public radio station down there. We went and pitched a soccer show. Um, they said, are you sure there's enough soccer to talk about for 27 minutes a week? Yeah, we yeah. said, we'll, we'll find a way. <laughs> 27 minutes? Yeah, 27 minutes and 30 seconds a week is what, we, what they were worried we wouldn't be able to get enough soccer content <laughs> for. We started putting it out as a podcast. Some people started listening. We started sneaking in and doing extra shows. It would be like if you guys came in here when the production crew wasn't here. Right, right. And, did your <laughs> and own stole the beers show. out of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, wouldn't, we, we wouldn't come here to work. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. that's not like a very you problem. <laughs> <laughs> and we just kept adding a day a week, a day a week, a day a week till we were five days a week and we we cover like almost everything. That's, that's un- insane. That's insane. So when you were doing that, obviously, I imagine you were not making any money, right? I, I, but you were mm. doing this five days. I mean, I was, but in a different job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you you were a, a man of the night uh, <laughs> while you were. 
you call him a prostitute? That's your, that's your second did. sex worker joke yeah. in like two minutes. He, he what is have you he heard did. of us? <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, when we were on uh, on tour together, we we got to like kind of share stories about like either so you, your soccer stories, our comedy stories, and and when we were uh, when we started, just uh, we we did like other comedy podcasts, and we just kind of like made that commitment to do that, knowing that we weren't gonna make any money. We didn't know what would sort of come of it. It was How, just like eating up time for us. But, and yeah, and when like we were do it was like one day a week, but to do it five days a week must have been a, a real belief in what could possibly happen. Or was it extreme boredom? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in between, I'd say, because re really it wasn't. A little bit of a Venn diagram there. <laughs> I think it was just sort of, maybe it was the incentive for me to move back from like Northern Virginia to Richmond was just if, we, yeah. if you move back and stop living in a terrible place, then we'll go five days a week <laughs> and it'll be fun. And that was pretty much it. It was mostly just sort of like, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. When we started off pitching the show, the network we were with asked if the, we were sure there was going to be enough soccer for one show a week, and now here we are with like six and seven sometimes. So yeah, we're, yeah. Also, we're not done. We didn't start doing five days a week with no money, right? It was when a little bit of money came in, okay, then okay. we had a show, but we build and build and build. Okay. Yeah. 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 Strategery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you started a soccer show in America, and you want to tell us you're not dumb? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we've all we've all been there, man. We all see what this is. Yeah, we're I'm trying not... to ask you, like, why do your wives believe in you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a very good question. We're not going to go back to England and take on Luke Moore, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but we're we stay will. here and take on you guys. <laughs> yeah, we will, dog. We're coming for your fans, dog. So, but th th that level of like the show is just huge now. I mean, it is. It is. You are arguably, and this is like the thing when I when I first met you guys, and we we first met in Philadelphia for yeah. the United Soccer Coaches Convention. You guys came to a stand-up show. They put the pressure that, on us. That we did, right? But I didn't know what, like, I didn't really know what you guys looked like, and, and you guys yeah. are, like, the voices of soccer, but not the faces, right? Like, oh, I didn't know what you guys looked like, and this yeah. is like, you guys are cool, and you look okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People were going up to Christian going, Daryl? I'm like, nah. <laughs> nah, that ain't it. <laughs> we actually got a lot of, um, I thought you were the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. still get that. We still get people emailing to correct us for having it listed wrong on the website. Yeah. That's hilarious. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know y'all know each other, but you did it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These people have been watching Face Off. They think we should. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Great movie. So th th the fact that... <laughs> the sh the, did you imagine the show getting this big? Like, you guys are now a part of the Athletic Network. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it, it You're is... You're the first podcast on the Athletic, correct? First American one, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that, I mean, and that's saying a lot because they hate America. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're teasing. The, like, we love you guys. Uh, but the fact that the show got to uh, currently where it is, like, what are the, what's next for a total soccer show? Uh, I, I, as, are you guys even generally thinking about growth or is it like, we're good, and we, we can't believe this happened so There's far. no more days of the week. I mean, how many more episodes can you do? What else is there for you? I mean, I'm really enjoying just sitting here listening to you all say really nice things about us. It doesn't make me feel it's uncomfortable end with at all. Segment, yeah. so, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> we have been doing a little bit of producing. Mm -hmm. So we've started producing a couple of other shows, um, like a Major League Soccer show uh, with Joe Lowry, Jordan Angeli, yeah. right? Right. mostly because we don't... Um, we don't know as much about Major League Soccer as we do about maybe some uh, European leagues. So we thought we should help someone who'd be good at that, um, you know, produce another show. Of yeah. course. Okay. So that's maybe the next thing is to start producing. Nah. Yeah. And right. I do plan if you to throw in. Tips, we... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get I, could, I could steal some from the barista downstairs. <laughs> 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 you really want them. We got more with Total Soccer when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> so gentle. Yeah. I just, sometimes I want to caress the fans. You know? <laughs> Doesn't always have to be blunt. You know? uh, we are here with Total Soccer Show. Uh, you guys. Uh, sometimes people say, "What's the difference between you and soccer?" No one says that. But <laughs> the way I like to explain that is like the ratio that we have to jokes to facts. You guys are the opposite, right? Yeah. You guys are, are very funny, but you you do research and stuff, which we don't. I mean, people right. are like, "Do you even watch the game?" And I'm like, "What game are we talking about?" <laughs> uh, oh, the like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I should turn around. Yeah. Well, maybe the concession lines the hand needs a shorter line. Um, I would say, based on the like frequency of your storytelling, the best way to explain it would be that we stay and watch the game. 
game, and you apparently, as soon as kickoff happens, go straight to the bathroom to see if incidents <laughs> yeah. occur. That seems that to be the way it works. Be scoring, <laughs> Taylor. That's what right. does his work. Okay? I'm sorry that I'm trying to help the team <laughs> do what I do best, which is releasing my bowels. <laughs> to be, uh, to be uh, serious, I think it's part of why we're friends and why we can work together yeah. is we're not a threat to each other. Right? Oh, sure. Like I, we, when we first met, I think that was like immediately we recognized yeah. that. Like, oh yeah, we're you do one thing and we do another, yeah. but we're both in the same space. You're not you're not going to rewatch a game for tactics, and we're not going to go through Jermaine Jones's Instagram yeah. endlessly. Yeah. So, yeah. You're missing out, yeah. kid. <laughs> so that's what you're doing when I'm going through Instagram is watching games. Ew. Like, you guys focus a lot more on the nitty-gritty, and a lot of what you guys talk about is the men's national team. Mm. Um, how frustrating, first of all, is that? Uh, and two, where do you think about where we are now? Some of the tactics seem to be kind of sort of gelling with the, with the team. Um, just give us a little bit of insight. Give the fans a little bit of insight that, uh, from people who actually watch the game I, I think a big thing for us like from the beginning uh, and a reason why I think Daryl and I work really well together is because we both tend to want to know like what's happening and why and I think that's what we sort of have tried to do with the show I feel very pretentious talking about the show like this <laughs> so I apologize <laughs> but like I think that is sort of if helps it comforts us. you you also sound it <laughs> that's good it does it does thank you no problem uh, but yeah I think so that's kind of how we try to approach it with the national team is less like I'm really mad about this this is really frustrating and more like okay there must be a reason why they're doing it why he's playing this way why he's called up this player hasn't caught up that player so i think approaching it from that perspective maybe makes it easier a little bit yeah. to talk about and i think that's what the two watches are for right the first watch is all emotion and like oh is that going to go in mm. oh i'm so angry that he missed that and then the second watch is oh maybe he missed that shot because he was under pressure from this angle or, you know yeah. I mean? so there's one emotional and one analytical the second watch already i mean yeah. I, 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 we applaud you both because <laughs> i'm tired, <laughs> I'm tired thinking I, about it. i've already been through such an emotional experience that i, I don't know if i can watch the game right. again and that is for people who do not know they watch Watch the set, the game over again and uh, again to, to analyze it. And a lot of a lot of time, you get a lot of tweets all the time. Like uh, as soon as the game is happening, mm -hmm. people are like, oh boy, I feel bad for uh, Taylor and Dow. They gotta yeah. watch this again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys first do your quick take, hot take, right? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes yeah, when you get ones. a chance. And that's like the immediate reaction mm -hmm. to what yeah, just yeah. happened. No data, as I like to call it, the closest thing you get to cooligans. Uh, just, <laughs> we should call it the Alexis yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's us just yelling about something that we're not even sure happened in this game. <laughs> we may be talking about something that happened in another game. But then you rewatch the game and you take notes. And what I would do if if, if Christian and I rewatch the game, we would be doing to watch who to blame. You guys don't take <laughs> that tag. Like, who's, here's the guy who should get dropped from the club. You don't do that. We call it the Jermaine Jones angle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who do, with all due respect, is the name of that episode. You really are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really are George Costanza's father, huh? It's just I like, I got a lot it. of problems with you people. I'm going to find one of it. you. I would and now love you're going to hear about it. I would love it. <laughs> um, when, you, when you rewatch it, how hard is it to sort of remove yourself and to try to be more tactical? And you guys, I know you play. Have, have you guys coached before? Because it mm. seems like that's sort of. You guys take the tactic of like if these were my the the lads yeah for, to use your phrasing uh, <laughs> that, that I'm coaching here's what I would come back with here's where we messed up you have that kind of approach to yeah it. well I mean Taylor's got a coaching license and we both coach an right. adult team for yeah I can get soccer. a fake coaching license too uh, this isn't right we're not <laughs> bragging here okay? he has a real coaching <laughs> yeah. license and I'm very good at laying yeah. out coaches <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that sort of the tactic that you guys try though you got to be like. Because the fans seem to appreciate mm -hmm. that. Like, it seems like you guys kind of quell the anger the fans have sometimes. I, th I mean, I think, honestly, I think Daryl's really good at that. Uh, I tend to be, like, the more emotional of the two. And I am the one who was probably, in the past, like, no, nah, we can watch it once. That's fine. I think Daryl has the dedication to, like, making sure we actually have, like, watched it and have opinions on it. So I think I tend to initially, maybe in the hot take ones, be a bit more emotional, a bit more reactionary. You tend to be a bit more level-headed, unless maybe England is involved. And even then, you're usually pretty calm. Yeah, yeah. I guess I have more free time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I, I, I appreciate about you guys is you guys have genuinely made me care more about the men's national team in the level of, of attention that you pay to, you know, that you focus on it. So like, it took a British guy to make you more American? That's what, what he's saying? <laughs> he invaded my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walked but, in with a red coat into my brain. Dude. But even talking about the men's national team, why uh, was that such a, a big focus? I, I can, un at least for Taylor, I can say him being American, I can understand why, like, there's a natural sort of connection. Yeah. But, but Daryl, you, I, th I would on argue you know more about the U.S. men's national team than most people on this planet. Uh, so how did it become? How did it make you care so much about it? Yeah, actually, I don't have a fun answer, but the real answer is when I moved here in 2005 uh, to uh, marry my wife. She was kind of the only person I knew to begin with, yeah. um, and also I didn't really have a connection to the U.S., but I had a connection to soccer, right? So I started watching 
the US men's national team, right? So that became like my first little bit of patriotism, you know what I mean, was the US men's national team. You just get yeah. a red hat and just, I mean, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's the alternative, right? Yeah. Be, be glad I chose this one. Yeah, please, <laughs> please don't. Please don't do the other one. I owned a red hat, not that type of red hat. Yeah, that yeah. red hat is gone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing that in public. I'm the same way. Yeah. Um, how long did it take before you started calling it soccer? Not long. Really? Like, I really believe in the idea that, um, I mean, you, you and I have talked about how like, yeah. British people can be very like, this is the way it is. Yeah, of course. Kind of thing. But also, if you're in a foreign country, and I know we, we share the same language, right. um, but if you're in a foreign country, you use the words that people use, right? You go to Italy, you say calcio. Do you right? go back? Do you, when you go back do to you? England, do you, do you say soccer Do you still? say calcio? I mean, I haven't been to Italy in a long time. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, wow, we just bragging that we've been to Italy. Italy. Not bad. <laughs> when I go do back, you say soccer? Yeah, when I go back, I slip sometimes. Do you? And I'll get like a nudge or a, yeah. It's like a, like, well, like when a, like a, like a, your friend comes back from uh, Barcelona and they're like, I was in Barcelona. And you're like, you don't have to. <laughs> we get it. Or they're like, namaste. I was in India. No, I'm like, not, don't do it. But it's not <laughs> in that pretentious it. kind of way. It's more in uh, like I just accidentally said that because yeah. that's what I'm used to saying. Are you like super loud when you go there? Like American as hell, just <laughs> kicking stuff over. Why is this beer warm? <laughs> 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 refill my soda. Yeah, yeah. Why is it this cup larger for this free refill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting diabetes. <laughs> Again. Why? <laughs> That's Jerry, what you have it already. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that messed up? You have it and I don't? <laughs> Why do you people believe in God? <laughs> Jerry, who's, who's the what first What do you American? mean, you people? <laughs> <laughs> who's the first American that you remember watching? Was it Harks? Yeah, yeah, way back in the 90s, John Hawks. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. John Hawks, who also hates us. Uh, because we <laughs> called the penalty on the other team <laughs> yeah. at a charity match. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you, the, can't, you can't deny he's a competitive individual. That is for sure, because he still is, hates us. All your <laughs> idols hate us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to America. We'll be back right after this with more with Total Soccer Show. <laughs> Right, baby, we are back with Total Soccer Show. <laughs> uh, one of the things when we get together, we do special episodes, right? And one of the big things we do is we take uh, listener questions. Now it's watcher questions, right? Which sounds weird. Sounds oh, like I think it's viewer. I viewer? Think it's viewer <laughs> questions. Yeah. I, I like know. watcher questions. Like, leave me alone. It sounds like we're behind you. Sounds like, very voyeuristic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could see you. <laughs> uh, so we got a couple questions. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask a couple questions. I think we'll all get to answer. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, it will. All right. <laughs> So you want to do the first one? Oh, okay, sure. sure. The first uh, question comes from uh, Reverend Joel L. Tolbert. Uh, this is so a real reverend, though? I looks like it. He He's holding a, a book. I don't know what's Hold in the it book. a book. You must be a religious man. <laughs> it's Harry Potter? Wow. Praise you, sir. What, because you own a white scarf? <laughs> so, wow, you think you're special, uh, dog? No, reverend Joel L. Tolbert, he says, three things to immediately fix VAR in the Premier League. Go for it. Ooh, I, um, got, I got three. Shut down all media. Yeah. <laughs> Stop everybody complaining in the newspapers so, and websites. So you're taking the dictatorial yeah. approach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So King Daryl says. Yeah. <laughs> So, so far, no more no just, more media? Just no more complaining. Everybody stop complaining. Okay. It'll be fine. All right, I got yeah. one. Go look at the screen, Rev. Yep. Yeah, they, they finally started. I think that they've done it one or two times uh, this Premier League season where they're finally going to look at, at, at the screen. So I think there's going to be improvements. Obviously, the first thing, get rid of the offside line machine. It is pointless and oh, useless. Oh, the red line, blue yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, what a waste of time. Uh, like, let it be... If it's like a get, if you have to guess, it's a goal. That's my opinion. <laughs> For real. To get, so you want to give leverage to the to, offensive player? Yeah, I want to see goals. Yeah, <laughs> come on, baby. <laughs> come on, come on. Make the goals bigger. <laughs> That's how you fix ball. Yeah, I mean, you can see the goals. They just don't count. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Yeah, which is just as fine. Well, semantics <laughs> as if your people invented this language. <laughs> just sit here. That's why I just when I just go to the park, I just throw the ball in the net and I lose my mind. I go, <laughs> rip the shirt off. Bro. Get the kids out of the park. He's back. <laughs> but Alexis, to your, to your point, like we were all in Germany, we we were at the Bayern Munich game with Frankfurt when uh, I forget who got sent off. Was it Boateng who got yeah. sent yeah, off? Boateng yeah, but like that part. whole process, like referee went to the the sideline, looked at the screen, didn't mess around with the players, didn't say in, like stay and chat with them, and then went back, gave the red card, play resumed. It didn't take long, so I think that's a big one. I think to Daryl's point, like if there's better conversation about it, and like 
like we, we, it kind of ends up getting talked about. But like Daryl won't talk about it, I think, because it's like, yeah, like the line thing is frustrating, but it's the way the law is. It's being correctly utilized. It's just sort of if we flip it back, then there's going to be that conversation about like, well, he was offside. That goal shouldn't stand. And so it's it's always going to be a frustrating scenario. So I think if the dialogue is better and maybe the explanations are more concise, I feel like the FA is starting to panic a little bit or whoever it was this week who like released an apology before they were supposed to. Like that feels a bit like you're sort of playing into the media narrative now and making it even more confusing in trying to make it more simplistic. Even but, like the Lo Celso thing where they're like, yeah, oh, it should have mm-hmm. been. I'm sorry. That's during the game. Yeah. They apologize for getting that call wrong. It should have been a red card. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's not great. It's yeah. not a good look. See, Daryl's being quiet again. Yeah. <laughs> he refused He's got nothing to say. I was thinking if we do ban all media, then there's a hole that we could fill. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> now we just got to start to become media. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, uh, we got a question from Bug Eaters hey. FC. Bug oh, Eaters. And coincidentally, what a magic trick. I, I pulled this out of the bag <laughs> before we started because you had your jerseys on. I felt we got a Bug Eaters and uh, scarf works. in the house. Uh, Bug Eaters uh, FC. <laughs> He asks, has television yeah, given yeah, uh, soccer cooligans egos? Hashtag gully. I mean, you can't give something that's already there. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's like, I'm, 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 up with egos. I'm assuming this is the owner, Jonathan. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he kind of set me up for that one. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 be, I'll be totally honest in this question. Uh, Christian, no. Alexis, there was <laughs> definitely, Absolutely not. Okay. There was you're gonna say. definitely a like five minute period when we were in Germany where three different times I heard you say like, and I got a TV show. And I was like, he do, he's you must have not been paying attention the rest of the time. Because <laughs> I was saying it forever. See, this is the kind of analytical takes you can get from get watching the soccer show. Well, they rewatched our friendship <laughs> and they mapped out whose fault it is. Turns out it's mine. The cool thing is we could rewatch it on TV. Yeah, true. Yeah, you can't, we're on TV. <laughs> okay, you got a show? so now when we get you out of the studio for saying something disrespectful. <laughs> so, no, <I'm> <laughs> so next up, we have a, a question from a Brian Hansen. He says, uh, if you four were to watch a classic U.S. men's or women's national team game, <laughs> Mystery Science Theater 3000 style, which game would you watch? Ooh. Also, thanks for pitching a wonderful idea for a television show. <laughs> <laughs> so Mystery Science Theater 3000, does it have to be like a bad movie? And does that mean we have to watch a bad game? Or can it be a good movie and a good You'd game? You'd want it to be something that has a, like a lot of stuff happening in it, right? So you could talk about it. Okay. But one that deserves to be talked about. One that has a lot of stuff Ooh, happening yeah. in it. I mean, I think I'll take the easy answer here. We also do a podcast called Soccer 101 where we bit, like explain basic terms or basic players, like how they got yeah. to be so no, good plug, or whatever. Plug whatever you want. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but one, one of the ones we're going to be doing, I think, in the upcoming season is the 2002 quarterfinal game against Mexico. Oh, yeah. Uh, USA-Mexico in the World Cup. Where USA wins 2-0. Rafa Marquez, right. Rafa Marquez gets a red card for trying to murder Kobe Jones at the yeah. end of the game. I feel like yeah. that's got a lot of incidents and a lot of drama it's behind like it. It's the start of Dr. It's usually Sir. murder is mm. frowned upon in soccer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason, not allowed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, when I saw this question, which is a great question, my first um, first one that came to mind was the U.S. Uh, Algeria. Oh, uh, the Donovan match, the Landon yeah. Donovan uh, goal. I mean, see, for me, it would be U.S. Portugal, where Zusi took like too long to come off, and that gave Portugal a chance to tie it up. Uh, oh, you're talking about in 2014. In 2014. 2014. Yeah. That game, I would love to sort of break down because it was like we we might be Portugal. Right, right. Yeah, we were so close. Yeah, it's uh, either that or the women's uh, game against uh, France in this last World Cup. Okay, I, I was get, for the women's. Uh, I would say the '99 uh, game, yeah, uh, the, we'll, the final. I feel, like, I feel like it needs incidents, though, right? Like, but yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe uh, Maradona '86 against England. It's got that, um, that like maybe best goal of all Classic time, US and it's women's. got the handball. Oh, sorry. Come on. <laughs> it's yeah, there's a lot of, of there's a lot of epic soccer. Look at you making it about England all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but I think I think to, to your point though, if we if we were going, if we're going mystery science the- theater, I think the uh, USA Thailand game for the last Women's World Cup. Oh yeah, oh. probably one where there's yeah, so many fun. goals and so many ridiculous moments. A lot of fodder. Moments. That yeah, might be the first one j- where we get up and go to the concession <laughs> theater <laughs> during the game. Okay, that is not the first time you've done that. In yeah, a game. that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. I poop. So this uh, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, question came from uh, Shaguna at Soy Shagu. Yeah. Asks, Shout which the Shaguna by the way. Which she's golden girl are y'all? <laughs> and so, she's from Houston, which explains the y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I man, I forget that that's not ubiquitous until I come to New York and I say y'all and I get the looks of like people stare at you. You're not from here. I'm like, all oh, right, y'all. Yeah, could you get out of the way, Buckaroo? I'm trying to get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, who's, I mean, there's so, four of us, right? So, okay, well, I, I don't remember the name. I mean, uh, Do- got, Dorothy, yeah. Blanche. Yeah. No, I, it's not. 
Estelle Sophia, Getty, Sophia. Sophia was the old lady. The high quality <laughs> research. <laughs> I don't remember cool this. Who's Betty White? Rose. I'm Rose. Okay. I'm either the the really old lady or Betty White, right? Like I'm either Rose. Okay, I, I want She's kind of dumb, so I feel like that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but then the other old lady's got a lot of attitude, yeah. which is also me. Rose is also kind of accidentally offensive a lot. Yeah, right, right. That's Christian. <laughs> yeah, right. Is that yeah. Where you're going? Is you going with it? I'm, I'm a Betty White for sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rose is like she was like she was like clever and a little snide, but like innocent. No, she was kind of dumb. That's me. No, no, Rose was she dumb? Yes, Rose was yeah hideously dumb. Who was no? Oh, and then hideously Blanche was dumb. the horny one. Yes. Blanche was the wild yeah. one, right? We all know that's Daryl. <laughs> uh, I guess that makes you. I get, I get the whoever's Bay. Left. Uh, what's her name? B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Yeah. yeah. I'm Dorothy. Dorothy. Have you guys seen the show? Yeah. 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 I, I, I have, I have not. So I'm just kind of yeah. going with what y'all say. We. I, I watched it as Lo Mujeres que son oro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. I'm, uh, I want to be the horny one. Anyway. <laughs> I'm the dumb one. <laughs> Whatever. We'll be back with more stuff. Don't for this. We're back, Total Soccer Show. Absolutely amazing. Were you about to Millie? No. Oh, okay. Just... We got one more question. I know we were asking our questions before. I like this one. Better US men's national team coach between three guys who aren't men's national team coach, but I guess if they were <laughs> Nagelsman, Klopp, and Pochettino, who would you rather have as a men's national team coach? So was, and uh, I just want it on record, as I'm okay with Greg Berhalter, if you're watching, okay? <laughs> Please I, do the show. Yeah. Jersey. <laughs> That's what I heard. Because <laughs> Jersey always looks out for Jersey. Right? But anyway. Is he from Jersey? I didn't yeah. know that. You don't talk about that every yeah, time. I, I never bring it up. <laughs> Trust my guy. Uh, Trust I, would go, I would go <laughs> Nagelsmann on that one, I think. Of Why? Those are the three options. Just because Klopp and Pochettino, I feel like they have systems that require everybody to like buy into them. Be good at soccer. Lot. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> and then like it requires a lot of training, and I don't know if you can do that with a national team. Nagelsmann seems really flexible and does different formations based on the opponent and tries different stuff and is also a child. So I think I would He's enjoy seeing a child. He's 32, right? He's yeah. younger than everybody. Yeah. Yeah. How old is he get? 32. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 22 years old. <laughs> okay. I look terrible. Cast me in Beverly Hills, not a 2 one yeah. I did think when we first met you, I, I thought you were both younger than me because I think I'm the youngest of the four of us. No, we're just, we, we're immature because we're comedians. <laughs> Well, you are. Christian yeah. just looks young. Yeah, that's Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I don't know. When I see look in the mirror, we both look the same. I think uh, you look phenomenal. I think I, I would say Klopp, and I, here's the reason why. I've been saying for the longest that I think the men's national team is primed for a pressing style system because we're athletic more than we are good at soccer. Yeah, and that goes would bring that too, though, right? And would be cheaper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, who yeah. cares about money, bro? They got it. Yeah. They're not paying the women, right? So what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> they got it. They got it sitting right there. We'll take it out of the woman's account. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, an well, actual thing that they might have said. 100%. It is like a shared bank account. You know Chuck account? Blazer yelled at at one point <laughs> as he rolled by his ra but, rascal scooter on the way to his <laughs> cat's apartment. <laughs> like, but I think it's a fair uh, uh, point. Like, could... Like how he just walks over. <laughs> is is Jurgen Klopp... Kla that great of a manager because of the roster he has or because he, uh, of his coaching style? Or is it a combination of both? Can can a, a world, like, just epic manager go into almost any team, relatively, and drastically improve them? So the other thing you always hear about Klopp, right? Tyler and I are always into the tactics, right? But the other thing you always hear about Klopp is that his players would run through brick mm -hmm. walls for him, right? Yeah. Like, genuine, real brick walls like this one yeah. here, yeah. right? His players would run through brick walls 100 for him. 100% brick. <laughs> Like, production, well done. <laughs> I would, I would love to just see a U.S. national team inspired in that way, right? Yeah, yeah. And imagine, like, you know, we go to the press conferences sometimes for national team games. When we're allowed. Yeah, imagine like, <laughs> all his, his big uh, toothy grin, that, that whole thing. Yeah, like, dude. Klopp would bring a real personality to the men's national team. Okay. I'm yeah. not sure that's allowed and, here. But Pochettino's <laughs> available, so there's that. Yeah. Klopp, Klopp seems like the type who would be, like, you could hear him screaming from the locker room and then would just walk in and be like, how are we doing? Everybody good? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's not what I heard before. I want to do this. <laughs> Looking, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> well, we were talking about uh, Nagelsmann uh, uh, from, from Dortmund, and uh, Gio Reyna has been somebody that come, came up recently. Dude, I've read the story, right? Yeah. It was on The Athletic. Um, Again, doing by... the research. <laughs> <laughs> by... We didn't. We read a tweet. 
Daryl. <laughs> exactly. Right? So it's written by David Ornstein. It was essentially, he was just making note of the fact that the, the FA, the English FA, has this list of like possible England internationals that they're tracking. It's and Geo Rayner's, it's literally yeah. thousands. Mm. And Geo Rayner's name is on it. And it's on a short list of players who've been impressing. Yeah. And they might look into the citizenship situation, right? Okay. But even half of that headline enters the American soccer Twitter sphere, and we all freak out because Giuseppe Rossi, Rossi hurt us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Jonathan Gonzalez. I mean, there's been a bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been burned. Yeah. 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 We, it's very uh, sensitive. Like you don't. It's like as soon as the the, the partial like uh, title comes up, but it's like please. Yeah. Why, why hurt us? We have nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did love. I, I did love Brian Shreda. Like somebody tweeted. Uh, like both of his parents like represented the like United States. Like he's definitely going to choose the U.S. And Brian Shredder was like, I hear that point, but to like stoke the drama a little bit, we do have a player who currently plays for the national team whose father played for another country and is now the president of that country in the form right. of Tim Wayne. Yeah, so yeah. Like, you never know, but you do know he's playing for the United States. Oh, but I and said then this to you last night, right? Like the difference between England and USA, like in soccer, is this, but then the difference between, say, USA and Liberia is like, you know, yeah. Liberia are not good at soccer, okay. right? So it wasn't right. like, it wasn't a tough choice. They've got other things to worry about besides soccer and Liberia for sure. <laughs> you know, if you're the president, you're like, let's not focus on who's playing the national team right now. And then I think McBride came out and said today, like, like I'm not like he's going to Europe right now to talk to a couple different players. He's not talking to Reyna, but like expects to hear more about him from yeah. us like very soon, which implies he's going to get called up in March. It was like so. we're excited about him, and you'll see soon. Yeah, right. Okay. So he could be in the national team for the March friendlies, like Wales and, and Netherlands. We're going to get crushed by the Netherlands, and then he's going to be like, you know what, England? Actually, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> during the game, you see him pick up his phone. <laughs> so Don't Dester put me like, in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but there's also the Olympic qualifiers for which he's eligible, right? So if Dortmund let him go he could be playing for the u23s and could get us qualified for the olympics finally let's go all right joe Rayner for president <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll be of back england <laughs> with more right after this guys Hello and welcome back, baby! Hey, all right. <laughs> okay. To the Total Soccer Show takeover. Yeah, yeah, takeover. Yeah, yeah. We're um, going to cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> they came in here and ripped up our contract. <laughs> How dare they? All these microphones are belong to yeah. us. <laughs> no, you, guys, you guys were just really nice to us in the opening segment, so we wanted to repay the favor and say some nice things about you. You guys are fine. Um, so we do have... Uh, <laughs> okay. That's the nicest thing that's ever been said about us. <laughs> we, we do have a, a bit of like a trivia game for you all. But I so for the people who are watching yeah. or listening, this mm -hmm. is something you guys do on your show. No, not this one. <laughs> this cool. is the new one. Sometimes, I don't know what I'm talking about. Some, I should yes and you. Yes and not really. <laughs> yeah. uh, during, <laughs> during our live shows, uh, this was incorporated yeah. a lot. We, did, yes. we would do games with audience members or guests and stuff like that. Yeah, so. it was it was mostly because the two yeah. of them are very, very funny and have good bits and good sets. And then the two of us were like, everyone just like, comics. And yeah. then these guys. And then comics again. Yeah. So we had to figure out some sort of thing to do. So All this right. is like the filler between Cooligan's stand-up sets. Yeah, basically. Perfect. <laughs> when we I, went back. Back, splash our face with water. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one question for y'all, which I'm guessing probably gets asked routinely. How did you decide who gets the chair and who's on the couch? Who uh, both decided? Yeah, okay. they put the fat guy on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> they need more support. They need more you and Andy strength. Richter? Yeah. <laughs> Follow the formula. All right. So we had a listener question uh, a while ago. If you all listen, then this is going to be a very simple game. It just That's feels like a thing that you all could sort of riff on very well. Oh, okay. It came from Matt Koss, uh, who, uh, who said, I remember reading about how Mario Balotelli had a behavior clause and a per goal money bonus in his Liverpool contract. What are some other strangely or specifically written soccer contracts? So we have a few players who had very strange contracts. Uh, I'm going to give you... The question, you can tell me what you think the clause was. So, uh, mm. Stefan Schwartz, when he signed for Sunderland in 1999, was prohibited from traveling where? More specifically, he was prohibited from leaving what? Oh, the uh, player hotel. All right, so Alexis is saying the player hotel. He was what, what about for games? <laughs> well, I mean, unless he's in the <laughs> So I guess it's then the country. <laughs> all right, so Alexis has gone with a serious answer. Uh, Christian, if I were to give you the hint that this is not a serious answer. He was uh, so he prohibited from leaving where? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess his home? Like, <laughs> was he like on house arrest? I'm assuming the country of England. <laughs> so can I give the answer? You can give the Just answer. Just so I have a role here. Mm -hmm. He was, he was um, not allowed to leave the planet Earth. Because <laughs> he had his he had expressed an interest in signing up for um, no, his like agent had like a, yeah like a space travel yeah. service <laughs> and they were worried that he was going to leave <laughs> yeah so keep that in mind as I ask you this one okay, how else right. are we supposed to prove the world's flat <laughs> um, a Neymar one 
Let's uh, which of these did Neymar have in his uh, Barcelona contract? A clause that allowed his friends uh, from Brazil to visit every two months with Barcelona pay paying for all expenses, or another clause, a different clause, guaranteeing him two million pounds if he did not dispute the coach's choice regarding his position on the field. Oh, which one of those is, is real? Mm-hmm. What, what, oh, that, arguing his choice on the field or his homies? <laughs> I feel like knowing Neymar, it's the homies the, one is the real one. The homies have to. That feels more real. It feels like a. I mean, is he yeah. that? Ar you want me to sign? You got to get my man's in them up here. <laughs> <laughs> Once every two months. Yeah. Oh well, I'll, I'll just go. I'll pick the opposite just so you, one of us field, will be I'm right. The, the homies. homies I, but the the coach. You've still? met Taylor before. It was both. It was both. <laughs> You're oh. both correct. <laughs> you got us. <laughs> you tricky buckaroo. <laughs> what? Uh, all right, maybe a slightly easier, more obvious one. Uh, when Luis Suarez signed for Barcelona, Barcelona good with the contracts. Uh, he bit the con no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's his signature. Barcelona inserted <laughs> a a, chomp out of a clause that prohibited what action, uh, which would be met with harsh punishment and financial penalties. Biting, then. Correct. Yeah, he yeah, has yeah, a yeah. no biting little, clause little in his nibble. Barcelona contract. Yeah, yeah. Charra Garrua. <laughs> uh, we'll do... Garra Charrua. How much time do we have? We Should have, we have, do couple, one more? We have about two more minutes. Two, Go for all right, it. Well, uh, we'll do two. Uh, well, we'll just do one, because there's only one more really good one. Uh, Giuseppe Reina, when he signed for Armenia Bielefeld in 1996, uh, he signed a three-year contract. He inserted a clause into his contract requiring the club to build him a house for every year he was under contract at the club. <laughs> The club honored this agreement, so to speak, but not in the way he intended. What did the club do? They built tiny little houses every year. <laughs> That's my You guess. are correct. Yeah. <laughs> Is that true? Out of Lego. Yeah, <laughs> really? He did not ah, That's how I would handle it. Yo, you think you slick, my guy? <laughs> Is okay. this a school for ants? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the little, like uh, uh, Kim Kardashian got... Her her daughter a little house and like like a I mean like a dream house but yeah. she could like you know after she's a toddler it's got like a second floor in it and all yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah yeah but it's like I would build those I mean it's yeah. like it's you know it's not as insulting as Legos but it's like <laughs> hey you, your kids or your dog can have a good time in this little <laughs> you think he was it was like you guys are good <laughs> you guys are good because I was initially like tiny houses like tiny house hunters or whatever oh yeah. But yeah, no, that would, Legos is They better. went even smaller. <laughs> Legos was just dreadful. He's like, can, can the next one be red at least? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more after this, everybody. <laughs> Again, Come on! Crushed it with Total Soccer Show. Uh, what a what a collab! Finally on television. Normally it's just us two, but look how good we are carrying them as well. I mean, <laughs> my back hurts it's a little bit. It's true. <laughs> Isn't it great? No, we we were talking during the break. Apparently, this is the first time Taylor and Daryl have done television. Well, you're well welcome. Okay, and we, <laughs> and we want to cut. Uh, what? I'm not sure. No, no, it's been an honor to have you guys on. Uh, it's been an honor to be our, here. Our yeah, best friends you. in the business, you know. Really? I like, I like the yeah. cover that's that means a lot. No, they're, they're Thanks, outside. Yeah, I'll go. Get out. Yeah. John Strong? <laughs> John Strong's coming. John Strong is here. <laughs> so, guys, uh, let people know uh, what they should uh, look out for, any any projects or anything you guys got coming up. Oh, well, there's, there's the show, the Total Sock Show, which is available on all good podcast players. Um, we also have, Taylor mentioned it earlier, right? And the bad ones. Too. And the bad ones, too. Uh, Soccer 101, which is our sort of guide to soccer. Which is great. I love that show, And too. then we've been dabbling in a little bit of producing. Um, the, the actual producers would maybe laugh at what we're doing, but we're, we're producing. Uh, we We've got a show called MLS Assist, uh, which is um, an assist with um, MLS Tactics. Right. Nice. If you want to hear about MLS Tactics, it's Joe Lowry, Jordan Angeli. Mm -hmm. And we're also working with Paul Tenorio and Sam Stagegirl on Allocation Disorder. Uh, another wow. great show. Yeah. That's all great. So uh, make sure you tune in, guys. So as we end the show all the time, so for Taylor Rockwell, for Daryl Grohl, oh, I love my script. name is Christian Polanco. I'm and Alexis Guerreros. <laughs> and together, what are we? The, the Cooligans! Cooligans!